Odds are you won't get to sit on Santa Claus's lap this Christmas season, but I'll bet if you did get to talk to Santa, you probably would ask him for something having to do with your computer. Well, today we've got a great list of gift ideas for the computer user on your Christmas shopping list on this special holiday edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Gary Kildall is off Christmas shopping somewhere, I think. And sitting in for Gary this week is George Morrow. George, I want to show you something. This is my wallet. I'm not going to give you any money now. These are credit cards. And I want to show you one very special credit card. Look at this baby. Happens to have an alphanumeric keyboard oh. and a 2K memory in here. I have my Christmas shopping list in here. Look at this. I can punch up somebody's name, and that's what I'm supposed to get that person for How Christmas. How long see? did it take you to put all that stuff in there, Stuart? What's the difference? I had a lot of fun doing well, that's it, true. That's true. This is just a little example of a kind of high-tech computer present that you could get someone mm -hmm. who's into these things for Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about mm -hmm. today, good ideas for Christmas presents for, for computer people. Let me ask you a serious question, though, about this season. The Christmas season is very important, in fact, to lots of businesses, department stores, and so on. How important is the Christmas season to the computer industry? Well, this year I think it's going to be a little bit more important than usual because the tax laws are all ending, Stuart. All the tax changes are now going to be in place in the beginning of the year, and people are going to be spending money sometimes on equipment this year that they wouldn't have normally. And the other side, the little bit lighter side, is that I think in the computer industry that hope beats eternal, that each Christmas they will find a product that will find its way into the homes that and the hearts. the home market and, right, really will exist. Right. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to be joined soon by Paul Schindler and Wendy Woods so you can hear directly from the experts about some great Christmas gift ideas that you can buy in a computer store. We'll be right back. Stay with us. With us now in the studio is Paul Schindler, whom everybody knows is our software reviewer and specialist here on Computer Chronicles. And next to Paul, Wendy Woods, our specialist on just about everything dealing with personal computers. And of course, George Morrow is back here. And we're going to be talking about goodies for Christmas that have to do with computers. And I'm going to take the liberty of starting because I have something sitting up there in the computer. If I can show you this, George, this is neat. This is a program called Business Simulator. It was developed by the people who teach in the MBA program at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. They took their case studies that they use and they put them all on a disk now. And for about 99 bucks, I think it is, you can buy these case studies. They call it Business Simulator. They say it's like a flight simulator. You can mm -hmm. practice flying the plane and crash without killing yourself. You can crash a company without actually going bankrupt. <laughs> So what you see right here in this particular I should have gotten <laughs> say it George in this particular model you're running a little computer company it shows you who your competition is who the CEOs of the other companies are we've got various things we can do I can go in and read the Wall Street Journal for example and see what they're saying about my industry and there's the well it's called the business journal mm -hmm. but we know it's a <laughs> take off on the Wall Street Journal I can go in and take a look at some other things I can go in here and read annual reports uh, from my company and see how the company's been doing uh, and let's see, I can go see a balance sheet, for example, in the annual report and go see what's going on there. I can go back. I can also read, go into the file and read memos uh, that have been written in this company before I came over and, uh, and took over as CEO here and see what people have been saying to each other. Here's a finance memo that's uh, going to be in the file about possible bankruptcy. That sounds a little bit familiar there, too. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, what you, after you have all this information, uh, you can actually go make some d decisions about your business. So I go into make decisions, and you'll see we go into a decision menu here. Uh, decisions about how am I going to price my product, for example? How much am I going to spend on advertising? What product mix should I have? Uh, should I expand my factory uh, capability and so on? Once you do that, then you can go in and actually uh, what they call process the decision, and it just simulates uh, the business for one year, and you see what goes on. You then get back in and make your decisions again. The thing I like about here is that function R. If you get fed up with the whole message, George, you hit R and you retire. 
See, and it's all <laughs> over. And you don't have to face well, these problems uh, anymore. Uh, this is true simulation? A true simulation, yeah. These are, these are real case studies, as I said, that, that are used in training MBA students. And you can now, there are six of them. And matter of fact, the company says you can actually get these custom made now to your particular business with the, the particular competitors, particular product mix, and so on and so forth. I should get one of those, Stuart. It's coming kind of to you. Okay, George, I'm going to turn it over to you now. And I'm going to turn well, the keyboard over to Paul to okay. get ready for his demo. Uh, I've got Norton Utilities. This has saved my An life. An oldie but goodie. It saved my life twice this year. <laughs> I had corrupted files, and I don't know what I'd have done. I'd have had to spend a month doing system programming. So it isn't perfect, but I have to say that it was awfully helpful to me. Now, George, the... You know, I'm a record collector. Uh, yes. And I have this... Monster database. I have this monster database, 12 megabytes, and it was corrupted. Mm -hmm. And I got to go in and fix it with this thing. Otherwise, I would have been at the, I would still be at the keyboard trying to program assembly language to go in and get that file. So it really helped. You know, so, most of the, the more relatively normal of us who count on Norton to get us through our daily lives use the uh, unerase feature. I just want to mention, some people have heard that there exists a package somewhere that will unerase a file that you've accidentally erased. Right. Well, this is it, and I want to be sure to mention that. Yes, that's true, but there are uh, two or three utilities you can get that will unerase. Whether it does it as good as the Norton, I don't know. But okay. as far as I know, Norton's the only one that will let you actually go in and fiddle with a file if you need to. Did not know that. So your recommendation is Norton Utilities. Anybody doesn't have it, that'd make a great Christmas present. If you've got critical data yeah. that there's a chance you'll corrupt, it's good to have on your shelf. I want, to, I want to go to Wendy now for a minute while Paul continues to put his program <laughs> together there. You have a mysterious white box yes, in Yes, this of you. is a mysterious white box. Well, anybody who's been using spelling checkers knows how much memory a spelling checker can take up if you have it in RAM. And by the time you get to write your document, there's very little RAM left, right. unless you have a very powerful computer. Well, this is the first time that a spelling checker has been put in a box that's separate from your computer. What you do, this so is from hardware, Xerox. Hardware it's spelling hardware checker. spelling checker. Mm -hmm. And it's from Xerox. It's called PC Typewrite. And what you do is you plug this into the keyboard port in back of your computer, and then you plug your detachable keyboard mm -hmm. into the box. And then what will happen is as you're typing, if it, he if it sees you type a uh, misspelling, mm -hmm. it'll beep so that you can mm -hmm. stop at that word and, and make a correction. It's uh, certainly the first one of this kind that I've ever seen. It's got a 100,000 word vocabulary. Did you misspell something there? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's, it's also, you can customize it to add about 1,200 new uh -huh. words to you it. You know what it sells for, Wendy? Uh, right now it's $199.95. This just came out in uh, November Comdex, uh -huh. so it's probably reaching the stores very slowly at this point, but uh, $200 approximately, which is about what you'd pay for a good spelling checker anyway. Well, sounds pretty good. An oldie but goodie. She's got a newie but goodie here. I, I think it's a fantastic idea, by the way, as a regular habitué of spelling checkers. Of course, in my case, they're only catching typographical errors because I am a perfect speller. But uh, And I thought, I'd, I thought I'd jump in and mention that before you issued your usual uh, caveat against spelling checkers. I know you don't no, care much for no, them. No, no, I like them. I, I didn't uh, think uh, that I'd ever like I'd never be able to say anything good about a spelling checker, but I'm using a spelling checker, not an online one. I use one that I check as I go along it's when I want to. That's an online <laughs> spelling checker. Okay, right. And I've gone from being able to spell about 60% of the words right to being able to spell over 95% right. You're talking, you're looking at someone who never passed a high school English course. Well, what? you know, if you spell 90% of them, maybe that's 98. the difference. 98. Maybe that's the difference between success and failure in the computer business, George. Uh, better spelling? Maybe, maybe. Paul, what, what toys do you have for us? Well, I have, first of all, I'm a great believer in books at Christmas. I'm, I'm an owner. I've, I have hundreds of books. Most of them I've already colored in. No, seriously. I, I have a large library at home, and I'm a lover of books, and I always like to re recommend books for, uh, for all holidays, bir birthdays and Christmas. And uh, in conjunction with my colleague Richard Dalton of Keep Track Corporation in San Francisco, I have come up with several suggestions. First of all, the uh, IBM XT Clone Buyer's Guide, which uh, is an excellent uh, $10 uh, resource uh, for uh, people who haven't bought their XT Clone mm -hmm. yet. I mean, you and I both have ours, George, but there are people in this world who haven't bought theirs yet. This is probably the only book on the face of the earth that's uh, out of date 10 minutes after it goes to press, right? <laughs> well, there is a problem with that, but it, it, what it does Almost is it, certainly. In, addition, good... in addition to <laughs> offering you specific advice, it tells you in general how sure. to uh, look for one. Sure. It's from Modular Information Systems in San Francisco, and then here is a book with a spectacularly uninspiring cover, but the point is the information, not the, uh, not the package. It's $25. 
dollars, and it's called, cleverly enough, more than you ever wanted to know about hard disks for the IBM PC. Uh, all hard disks, it's $25. It's from Landmark Software in Sunnyvale, California. All, as you well know, George, uh, in the disk controller oh, business, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not all hard disks are created the same. That's right. And uh, they have different access times, different prices. It's it's more than, and, and of course, different, different capacities. Kinds, and different kinds of things can go wrong with and them. And different kinds of things can go wrong with them. This is a really thorough examination of just about all the hard disks there Probably are. Probably every user group should have one or two copies of that. Absolutely. It's, a, it's an excellent, uh, it's, it should be in every user group library and, and in a lot of personal libraries. Paul, I'm going to ask you All right, yes. to show us okay, this, this peculiar is, looking program. This is have. Looking Your Best from uh, One Step Software in Charlotte, North Carolina, $35. Now, I was rapidly entering uh, some not very accurate information about myself. The idea of this program is it's a clothing advisor. It doesn't mm -hmm. do your colors, you know, the, the hot yuppie trend of 1986. It doesn't do your colors. Only 16 colors in the eye. But it'll do <laughs> your, uh, but it'll do your uh, necklines. Now, unfortunately, I, I got, I've got a say one negative thing about it, it doesn't distinguish between men and women. So when it, when it shows me the neckline choices, as we noted when we were uh, trying it out just before the show, uh, it, um, it does Yeah, you wouldn't offer look too you good in that high cowl. In the high cowl, yes, I think it would be yeah. a little bizarre, but, uh, uh, it, you know, it, uh, and then it offers you choices of jackets. It, it goes through a very detailed uh, description of yourself, your hip size, your whether your shoulders are wider than your waist, which mine are at least for the next couple of years, uh, and it just uh, it's just chock full of advice based on things like the shape of your face and uh, the size of your hips and all kinds of information that actually I had to think about quite Dress a bit before for entering. success on a disc. Huh? Absolutely. Okay, we're going to move along now. We'll be back in just a minute take a look at some presents for people who have Apple computers. First of all, let's go out and see what effect this Christmas season is having on the sale of hardware and software. December is here, and once again, computer owners are faced with a surging need to buy, much to the pleasure of computer retailers. Some owners are ready to upgrade their systems, while others simply want accessories or gifts for their computer-savvy friends. Whatever the motivation, sales are climbing, and retailers are optimistic. Our sales this year have actually improved over last year, and sales going into Christmas last year I think were very, very high. Our current sales are running maybe four times what they were last year. Many shops prepare for Christmas by increasing their stock of high-priced luxury goods. But computer vendors are in the awkward position of balancing sales between corporate buyers and the growing consumer market, which is also becoming more sophisticated. In the past, people were looking for systems sometimes under $500. I think the average consumer is now budgeted uh, from $1,500 to $2,000 for a computer system. And for our store, most of the consumer lines can be purchased for that. This year's flashy newcomers, like the Amiga, the Atari ST, and the hard-to-get Apple IIGS, provide attractive floor demonstrations but they may not have the lasting impact of lower prices and more powerful machines. In 1979, we didn't have the variety of computers that are currently available for consumer use. The uh, Apple II computer was selling for $3,500 for a 16K machine. Uh, those are all under $1,000 now for 128K machines. Boys and girls, we're back on the show here now. Uh, just in case anybody thinks that uh, Paul changed his clothes having watched that program, <laughs> this is now Wendy and this is now Paul. And George, I have something I didn't get to show you in the last segment. I want to show you right now because it really relates to the business user, uh, the kinds of things we were talking about before. This is called the business consultant. They don't call it a calculator or a computer because I'm not sure Hewlett Packard knows which it is, but it's a very impressive either little toy or terrific yeah, business tool. Yeah. I'm not sure which. Probably the, a little of both. The nice thing I like about this, it has soft function keys in here, six mm -hmm. of them, and you can define them any way you want with this alpha keyboard over here, create any formulas you want, and then you can solve them very simply. For instance, I created a formula here for figuring out the cost of my car rental. 
variable. So I have variables in here like the daily rate, the number of days, the mileage rate, number of miles, the insurance cost, and I can now figure out the cost. I've already entered in the variables and I say, okay, what should that car cost me? Calculates, boom, $226.25. You can go backwards, of course, also. Suppose I say, well, my budget only allows for $200. I want to define cost as being no greater than $200. I hit that function key. I say, now what's the highest daily rate I can afford to pay? And it tells me that rate is only $25.44. However, the pièce de résistance, that little printer over there. Yep. No wires, no cables, no cords. Right. Watch this trick. And it's driving that printer through an infrared wow. beam. And it can work up to about 18 inches, 60 degrees. A great little business tool to carry around with you. This you leave on the desk, this you carry with yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, infrared printer, amazing. One other kind of device I want to show you, which has nothing to do with business. This has to do with kids. And that's what Christmas is about, I guess. This is a delightful little thing. You can only buy this through mail order. It's from a company called Sunburst. They have an 800 oh. phone number called the Muppet Keyboard. It's a great way for little kids to get comfortable with a computer. They don't have to learn about the complicated keys. They don't have to know QWERTY. You have little letters here. I've got something up now in which you teach kids about the alphabet. So I can uh -huh. hit H, for example, and I see a hamburger, right? The kid identifies. <laughs> okay. I can learn about numbers by saying, well, what does three hamburgers look the, like? Oh. Or what do six hamburgers look like, wow. for example? And they do little tricks. And I can say, okay, what is G? Okay, well, it's ghosts. Okay, and they do little dances. And what is L? Okay, L is little lobsters. And what does S do for me? Little singing socks and now, so on. Now, where does this, how does this plug in? Plugs the into the joystick port on the Apple. And you have number input, colors, letters. The thing I like, it's simple for a kid. There's no enter key. It says go. Right. There's no escape key. It says zap. There's no delete key. It says <laughs> <The> erase. <eraser. laughs> it's just a terrific little kind of user-friendly for kids uh, way to interface with an Apple computer. What do you have for kids? Well, this is for kids that are a little older. This is something that an aunt or an uncle is uh -huh. going to buy for somebody. This is uh, the SAT software that uh, prepares you for the SAT exams. There's about six or eight discs mm -hmm. here. Uh, it will tell you how much time to spend on questions. George, I'm going to stop you saying, could you recycle that? Oh, she got it? Okay. <laughs> Wendy's getting her program ready. Go ahead. This, uh, this will give you information on how to study for the tests, how much time to spend on questions. Uh, the SAT uh, exams, of course, are getting like uh, these uh, entrance exams in Japan. Yeah. So the uh, pressure to pass them is more intensive, and uh, something like this is certainly probably a much better preparation than any of the books or things yeah, like that. Certainly great for the high school level. Well, I, took, uh, I took two of them, and I wished I'd have had something like this. Well, I've played with this myself, too. It's very impressive, and it has a timer built into it. It has advice. It has different rates yeah. at which you can learn the stuff. It's very impressive. So it's a perfect gift from an aunt or an uncle. That's right. You were mentioning, Stuart, uh, before we started the segment, uh, there's a cram mode and a long-term learning right, mode, and I think right, that's yeah. that's absolutely excellent. So it's it's a little too late to buy it for this year, but for next year's uh, students, there's plenty yeah. of time to uh, to teach them about that. You have some neat-looking toys there, Paul. If Christmas is for uh, kids, then I guess this... Uh, Wow. <laughs> Gosh, I missed. Okay. Well, I'll keep trying. This is this is the absolutely hot toy. Uh, this is the product of the hot computer toy for this Christmas season. It's called Toy Shop. It's from Broderbund. It's $65. It's absolutely brilliant. Those toys are all These made? These toys were all made from paper plans <laughs> that come from the computer. Now, you say to yourself, well, you could buy a kit of paper plans, you know. And All right, so this catapult works. I've demonstrated that by shooting a couple of uh, spit wads at you and uh, Stuart. This carousel actually turns, and this car actually rolls. Now, I'm a ten-fingered klutz, and I'm the uh, Broderbund did these for us. I'm not sure I could do toys of this level of complexity, but the uh, I have done a couple toys out of it. I'm going to do several more before Christmas. Three great things, th two great things about it, really. It's a good project to do with your kids, and you can personalize these, put their name in, change the patterns. Well, Paul, one of the real appealing things, here is something that you can make a computer do something and actually put something together after you've had the computer do it. Exactly. And to make exactly. it clear, Paul, it really happens on the program. It's kind of a little mini CAD CAM program, right? Exactly. It Stuart. actually, you design it, and it prints out on your printer these parts, which you then use you to build then the glue toy. together and add wood, and it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's so simple, even I can use it. And that's, <laughs> we're talking simple. Now, speaking of simple, what one other quick thing I want to mention, the Pen Mouse Plus from Curta in Phoenix, Arizona, brand new, just out at Comdex, $300, 
for people who don't like mice, this is a, a little uh, a little electronic pen, mm -hmm. and uh, and if you move it around on the surface of this, it moves the cursor around on the screen. Now we didn't demonstrate that because it took too much time mm. to set up, but uh, you know allow yourself an hour or two to set this up. And if you hate mice, this is, is it an kind of like a koala well, pad. Is that it's, yes, it's like a koala pad. I have to tell. We should warn our viewers though. These these are this is a little transmitter there. And radio if you transmitter. Get, and if you get close to another RF source, a radio like a television set or you a radio, get some, you can get some interference. Right. So don't work in your TV. Wendy, what do you have? Oh, this is a great game from Electronic Arts called uh, Thomas Dishes Amnesia. Now what this is, is um, it leaves you in the beginning without any clothes on, in a hotel room, you don't know how you got there. Wow. And, this and is a family show, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to get clothes, you have to figure out why you're there, you have to figure out what your name is. And uh, it's the most ambitious text adventure that I, mm. apparently has ever been created. Um, so anyway. the character at the beginning has amnesia, basically. You don't know what anything is. That's right. He has nothing. That's he has right. no clothes. It's no, there's two no discs money, you go no food, through. Nothing. All the games from Electronic Arts are great. I hate to give any company a blanket endorsement, but okay, I've never I've never good. played a bummer from these guys. Well, this has been fascinating. Everybody who has been over at my house playing this has enjoyed it. it comes with a map of the Manhattan subway system, which is which uh -huh. is programmed into the discs. Uh, That's one way to learn how to use a subway. Cross system. street indicator. Wow. Um, it comes with a telephone directory of mysterious names, which are clues. <laughs> Including the FBI, I see. Guide to New York City. Right. <laughs> anyway. And it's go, a text adventure game. It's a text adventure game, and you go through this, and huh. here, for instance, uh, it's just presented you in the room. You don't know what's going on. First Wendy, command does it is always get up. have the same outcome? Do you always... No. Oh, no. I have, yeah. So far, I've been playing this maybe five or six times. I First of all, I've ended up being convicted of murder, <laughs> being tried and executed. Um, <laughs> I get up a guest on the computer chronicles Christmas show. Um, I've I've gone to um, purgatory. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I've ended up on the streets of New Wendy, York. Wendy, have one more toy there. We have a little bit of time. Show me what your other toy okay. is. Okay, this is a real cheapy ten dollars. Great <laughs> stocking stuffer. It's called the Chocolate Bite. Uh -huh. It's created by the Chocolate Software Company. Only three months, right around the Christmas season, can you find this in retail stores. Mm -hmm. It's pure chocolate, oh, and it's very in very the good in the shape disc. of a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. Can you open it up? Can we see what? Uh, well, it's a little broken oh, here, but. Oh, you messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. It's easy anyway, to. Uh, it's very good. Easy to. It is good. It's I've good had chocolate. two of them. Good myself. chocolate. Chocolate floppy right. disk. It is very good chocolate. So. Okay. Well, I think that's about all the time we have. We've seen lots of great toys here yeah. for kids, for grown-ups. Yeah. Uh, if you have a computer, if you know somebody who has a computer, here's some suggestions for you. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. random access file this week as we get closer to the new year, rumors keep building about IBM's plans for new computers in 1987. Leading the speculation is the expected unveiling of the PC2, a $1,000 PC featuring three and a half inch drives, expanded memory, and enhanced graphics. The PC2 reportedly will use a modified 8086 chip that will enable it to outperform existing PC clones. Analysts say the next step will be a flood of new software to take advantage of the new PC2 design, software that will not run on the clones. The rumor mill has it that IBM will unveil the PC2 in a Super Bowl commercial. And of course, there are the usual rumors that Apple will unveil a new computer in the Super Bowl, possibly an MS-DOS compatible Macintosh. Other predictions for 1987 include the IBM version of a 386 machine, again using a specially modified version of the Intel 8386 chip. And finally, IBM will supposedly introduce an upgraded version of the PC convertible, featuring a better screen, built-in modem 640K, and an optional hard drive. Ashton Tate says it will be coming out with subsets of its DBase 3 program for 386 computers. The company says it will unbundle DBase 3 so that the program's separate modules can take advantage of the power of the new 386 chip. Commodore says its Quantum Link online service has now become the second biggest online service for computer users, trailing only CompuServe. Quantum Link currently is only for Commodore users, but the company says it plans to open up the online service to IBM and Apple users sometime in 1987. 
For years now, people have been worrying about the possible health effects of sitting in front of a video display terminal for hours on end. Now two doctors in Pennsylvania say the problem is not radiation from the screen, it's lack of circulation in the fanny. The doctors say they found evidence of blood clots in the thighs of computer users resulting from sitting in one position in front of a computer for an extended period of time. The doctors say you should get up and walk around every now and then to stimulate circulation in the lower half of your body. Time for a look at software, and here's our reviewer, Paul Schindler. Much as I'd like to spend some time looking you in the eye today, this package is so spectacular that, well, let's go to the screen. You're looking at Perspective, the best graphics package produced so far. The data for all these graphics comes from simple spreadsheets. They're controlled by five function keys, clearly indicated by a large menu. Get a load of this first set of selections that allow you to decide what kind of 3D graphics you want to draw. There are 32 choices here. You just point at the one you want. Then from another menu, you select the view you want from a menu of 16 angles. Plus, if you don't like any of the 16 views that Perspective offers you, there's a rotation section which lets you look at graphs any way you want. Even if you don't want to change perspectives on a graph, this section of the program is fun to play with as a toy. Finally, the size and location of the labels can be adjusted easily. And this program will soon be available in color. Perspective is $300 from 3D Graphics in Pacific Palisades, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Business Week magazine says this should be a good Christmas season for software sales. Best sellers are expected to be home printing programs like Broderbund's Print Shop and adventure games, especially Infocom's new Leather Goddesses of Phobos. If you're still looking for Christmas gift ideas, we have yet a few more tips for you from other sources. Syndicated computer columnist John Dvorak likes a new game for the Macintosh called Smash It Racquetball. And for the PC crowd, he picks Traveling Sidekick as a great gift item. On the hardware side, Dvorak suggests the Bechtek Fanny Mac, a cooling fan for the Macintosh, or the Curtis Computer Toolkit, including pin straighteners, chip pullers, and other goodies. And Family Computing Magazine has come up with its picks for the best computer gifts of the season in hardware. The magazine picks the Atari 1040 ST as the best deal in a computer, the Tandy Model 102 is the best portable, the Toshiba P321 is the best printer, the NEC Multisync is the best monitor, and the Leading Edge Model L as the best deal in a modem. Finally, public television station WGBH in Boston has come up with an innovative way to raise money and take advantage of the high number of computer users in the Boston area. In February, WGBH will be conducting the world's first online auction as a fundraiser. Over 400 computer-related items will be up for bid and all the action will take place online, not on the air. That means you can participate in the auction and watch Masterpiece Theater at the same time. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide.